Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In today's video, I want to talk about a special case of hydrostatic pressure, and we call this buoyancy. So I take a wooden plank and I throw it into the swimming pool, and it floats. We refer to the plank as being buoyant. When we take a rock and we throw it into the swimming pool, the rock actually sinks. The rock is not buoyant. The same principle as for the plank holds true for a big ship. But how does a big body like a ship actually float? If we want to understand why the ship floats, we need to understand the forces acting on the ship. The first force is the weight of the ship pushing down due to gravitation. But there's an equal force from the bottom up, which is referred to as the buoyancy force. These two forces balance and the ship floats on top of the water. But how is it possible that such a big, heavy object can actually float? To understand this, we need to understand Eureka. Now, what does Eureka have to do with the ship floating? Archimedes, a philosopher and mathematician, was busy solving a problem for the king. He couldn't get the problem solved and decided to go have a bath. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to draw Archimedes sitting in the bath. When he got into the bath, he realized that the bath water actually increased in volume with the volume of water he has displaced with his own body and this is referred to as Archimedes' principle as this would help him solve the problem for the king he was so happy with his discovery that he actually ran down the street naked shouting eureka on his way to the palace but what does all of this have to do with buoyancy like I said, Eureka. To understand the buoyancy, we should look at our ship again. When we remove the ship, there is a void in the liquid, a volume of the liquid that is displaced by the ship. And this is what Archimedes saw. As he got in the bath, the level of the bath water raised. And the bath water raised with the volume that he's displacing with his own body. Thus we're getting this void, this hole, where before was liquid, is now filled by the object. And the liquid is actually pushing back to close that hole, and that is the buoyancy force. So we know that V of the body must be equal to the volume of the liquid being displaced. But we know that the mass of the body is not necessarily equal to the mass of the liquid being displaced. And the reason for that is because the density of the body is not necessarily equal to the density of the liquid. Let's work out this force balance. So the force of the body is equal to the buoyant force, which is the force of the water being displaced. And this implies that the mass of the body multiplied by the gravitational constant must be equal to the mass of the liquid being displaced multiplied by the gravitational constant. Now the mass of the liquid being displaced is equal to the density of the liquid multiplied by the volume of the liquid displaced multiplied by the gravitational constant. From this we see that the mass of the body equals to the density of the liquid multiplied by the volume of liquid displaced. Now the mass of the body is also given by the density of the body multiplied by the volume of the body. And from this we can see if the density of the body equals the density of the liquid, we have a neutral buoyant body. If the density of the body is smaller than the density of the liquid, then we have a 
buoyant body. And if the density of the body is bigger than the density of the liquid, then we have a, a sinker. Guys, not a stinker, a sinker. So let's go back to our ship. When we look at the ship, what is its density? And we know that the ship is made out of metal, and not the music variety. But it's not all metal. There's also air trapped inside the metal shell. So the total density of the system is much lower than you think. Although the outside is metal, the inside is trapping air with a lower density than the liquid, so that the total density of the system, the ship, is less than the density of the liquid it is replacing. And we've seen that if the density of the body is less than the density of the liquid replacing, it will be buoyant, it will actually float. So although the force of the ship working downwards is quite big, the buoyancy force working upwards is just as big for it to float. And it is because of the volume of liquid being displaced and actually wanting to run back into that volume that is now filled with a lower density fluid. So let's look at a special case of buoyancy called the hydrometer. First, what is a hydrometer? This is a picture of what a hydrometer looks like. And this is one being used. Now, what is the function of a hydrometer? We use a hydrometer to calculate the density of an unknown fluid. How do we do that? Looking at this example and understanding buoyancy, we know that the mass of the hydrometer equals to the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of the fluid being displaced by the hydrometer. One can easily determine the mass from the hydrometer by just putting it on a balance. The volume for the hydrometer, on the other hand, will be the volume of the ball plus the volume of the stem. The volume being displaced is the volume of the ball plus some part of the volume of the stem. A certain portion of the volume of the stem is protruding above the liquid level and is thus not displacing any liquid at the bottom. Because the total volume of the hydrometer is known, and the volume of the hydrometer above the liquid level can be calculated, this can be used to calculate the volume of the liquid displaced. Once the mass of the hydrometer is known and the volume of liquid displaced, one can calculate the density of the liquid. I really hope this helps and that you find these videos interesting. Until the next video lecture.